Welcome to Green Ball Extra. I'm Craig Easdown, and today we're talking all things cricket with two very special guests. Today we've got Cricket Scotland's Rosie Ryan and Cricket Ireland's Ali Nolan. Welcome, Rosie. Hi, Craig. Uh, I'm excited to be on the show today and uh, hopefully talk about all things Cricket Scotland uh, slash Cricket Ireland as well. So, exciting. And welcome to Ali. Thanks, Craig. Good to be here. Thanks for having us on today. Now, Rosie, you've been with Cricket Scotland for almost four years and you're the Women and Girls Participation Manager. Um, what, what does that role do? Uh, well, I mean, the overall aim is obviously to grow uh, women and girls' participation uh, within Scotland. Um, and that, that is really through players, supporters, volunteers, um, coaches and officials. So there's a lot working with, with the clubs and, and obviously helping with supporting programmes, participation programmes as well in clubs. So it covers quite a lot of things. Um, so yeah, it's good fun. And the idea of cricket, I mean, where did that come from? Uh, cricket, the idea for cricket came about, um, so obviously I started four years ago um, and it had always been something in the kind of back of my head after seeing things like uh, cardio tennis. I took part in uh, a local one which was to do with squash and it was basically an exercise programme um, to do with a sport and I always kind of wondered what it would look like, a, a cricket one would look like and how how that would also help help out clubs and things like that so it came around from just looking at loads of different programs and thinking that there wasn't really one for for cricket that was out there um, and just seeing the potential in that was was really exciting as well. And was there much research or data behind what you designed and developed? Yeah so so we had basically we worked with Edinburgh University um, at the start and we kind of needed the research to back up what we were we knew it was a good idea but you need the research to say why why it's a good idea and then um, we went around asking you know uh, different different women and girls you know do you like sport um, some said yes some said no uh, what what sport do you like and a lot of people said that they like the gym um, and I think from from that we kind of realized that people go some people will go and do something if they're not sporty or if they're not, not into team sports that they'll go and do something that they get a benefit out of so that may be getting fit and maybe just just to see other people as well so it could be um you know a bit of cardio on the bike as well and things so we kind of uh, we, we added everything up and um a lot of people said that to encourage them to do cricket it would be a, a, a kind of social environment, a, an empowering environment, um, and something that would get them them fit as well without any pressure. Um, so we we kind of from that started to form, obviously what was what was cricket, and um, it's a bit of a play on words as well with cricket. So so sometimes when you're saying it, people don't know what one you're saying. Um, but it's it's good fun, and I think it really goes away from the stereotypical. Um, cricket kind of sport and, and I think it's all about it really is about changing mindsets and how we get people into the game and and that's the main thing with cricket is getting a new audience in or people that used to be involved in cricket getting them involved and um, yeah it's, it's successful because of that. And to get a, a good idea off the ground and implement it you also got to engage a lot of people internally and externally I mean what sort of people were you getting on board to to help push the, the program into bring it to fruition. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, it was obviously we needed to get all the clubs involved and things like that. And I think because it's a tailor-made program, it's it's very easy for people to get involved. It gets coaches involved, and you know, as much as we get participants involved, we've got a whole lot of new coaches um, involved because of it as well. Because it's not your stereotypical you need to know everything about cricket and um, it's a nice mix of everything um, so it was it was really built in house within Cricket Scotland um, and then obviously we engaged with the clubs and from there we started to see um, what would work with them and you know engaging within schools as well so um, I guess getting people on board and changing mindsets was the was the biggest thing but that was that was fine because I think we're 
we're in a path at the moment where we're we're seeing different things and we see what works and we sometimes if something's not working we've got to change it so um and ali on you you're appointed in 2019 as cricket island's first women in sport officer through the sport island program i mean what's been the focus of your work so far um, well, I think it's fair to say that we've been working a lot on um, some mass participation programs. Uh, that's kind of been the main thing. And then cricket obviously became a significant component of that. And it's been fab so far, to be fair. Um, it's been really um, different um, to work with an international body, I suppose, and to see how it's worked in, in one country and uh, how our kind of local knowledge in Ireland will make it work here. So taken into consideration what has worked elsewhere and you know what's available to us here what we can do to kind of adapt it and you know deliver it in the most appropriate means um so yeah cricket and then a couple of of uh, youth mass participation programs around the way they're really really exciting to be fair rosie's seen a sneak peek at those so um they're on the way at some point in 2021 once we uh, have a clearer picture maybe of you know how day-to-day uh, -day life might get back to some sort of normality we'll start to see those rolling out um and yeah broadly i guess just uh working alongside the participation team and um anything that needs to be done at the moment gets picked up and gets done uh, participation is obviously a key part of your role, as you said, and the pandemic hasn't helped uh, at all in that. Um, are programs like cricket almost tailor-made for such periods we're going through? Yeah, I think that's probably fair in a sense. Obviously, Rosie's alluded to there that the huge amount of research has gone into creating the program and kind of the beauty of it from our perspective is it's so um, simple in its delivery that we were able to be pretty adaptable in our approach and moving it online. Um, the support that you know we got from Cricket Scotland in, in making that happen um, and then being quite happy that we would make those amendments was awesome as well and that was significant. Uh, it's been a fairly um, mammoth effort to get to this point to be fair there's been a lot of contributors um, and yeah I think you know the first week has gone really well we've over 15,000 views on the social media channels online which is pretty massive um, so hopefully people are actually getting something out of it and they're able to you know have that introduction to cricket albeit at home at the moment. And Rosie from your experience in Scotland I mean was the rollout initial rollout was that smooth and was that well received? Yeah, it was really smooth, actually. Um, and again, I go back to that kind of change in mindsets at the start. Um, and a lot of clubs were looking for something or looking to help engage females, uh, women and girls in cricket, but not, not maybe sure how to do that and how to get a new audience into the club. Um, and we obviously found that cricket was, was just a golden ticket with, with some of those new clubs. And, and also with clubs that have already got an established women and girls team in and things like that that play hardball hardball cricket and I think it was also something for for a new audience to come in and also they could they could jump on that so you know parents mums and things like that could come along to something um whilst you know instead of just watching their their child play cricket or they could they could also get a benefit out of something as well and I think that's been the really good part of it and the, the really empowering part of it as well that that we can get a whole loads of different people on boards and and it doesn't matter about your age or ability um because it's really accessible for everyone um so yeah lots of clubs have taken to it and it's been very very positive and and there's been some amazing stories coming out of it as well um but people getting that haven't played cricket in years getting back involved in it because of the program um and especially because you know it doesn't last for hours and hours like a cricket game it's you know it's only 45 minutes to an hour then then that makes it really easy for people to 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 do it once a week or twice a week and how did you promote or spread the word about cricket throughout throughout scotland yeah, we, we, we kind of, we, we spread the word with, within, obviously with the clubs and things like that and through social media, which is, you know, the big one. Um, but there was a lot of word of mouth and there was a lot of people. So, you know, if a club's starting it up, it, sometimes it is a lot of word of mouth or, and then just getting that, getting that out there. And, you know, it can be for the fitness people. It can be for the cricket people. It can be for people that have never played cricket before. So it was a lot of kind of, work within the clubs and they obviously had their different networks in schools and um, a lot on the cricket web, the cricket scotland website as well and um, but yeah so it just depends on how a lot of clubs took ownership and how they 
how they managed to do that and there was loads of different ways of advertising it um, and it could have been during another participation program that was going on for kids it may have been that cricket was cricket was running alongside that as well so we found loads of different ways of it working quite well and that's the exciting part it's very kind of flexible now Lee, pre-pandemic you had rosie over in ireland running a few sessions with irish coaches i mean what areas were you able to cover during those sessions yeah, it was pretty substantial what we got done in a short space of time, to be fair. Um, we had all of the development staff across the country come to the National Sports Campus in Abbottstown, which in itself was a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Um, so Rosie came over and very kindly delivered um, an introductory uh, session to cricket. So everybody kind of got their material, got to grips with the programme, had a good basic understanding of what it was that they were going to be doing for the day and what... Um, you know the program might look like um, uh, when we get to the point of rolling it out across the country and then uh, she fairly put them through their paces for a good hour hour and a half so there was a lot of hands-on sort of um, experience in that hour and a half within the sports campus um, which was really great so everybody kind of had an opportunity then as well to mingle and have a conversation and you know get answers to any questions that they had and um get to know each other as well which was quite cool because you know we have provincial unions here obviously and um don't always get to interact in that kind of an environment um it was formally at informal everybody really had an opportunity to get down into the nitty-gritty of what they wanted from cricket um and have those conversations and those introductions it's not that often that we kind of get that face to face time so it was really really valuable um and we got to uh, pick their brains as well because you know people on the ground are kind of the most important and you know they they are the ones that we get the information from um so that was really helpful from um, our perspective as well within our team um, and we were also were able to deliver a, a Sport Ireland Young Voices in Sport uh, training initiative too which was really really cool that day so the objective with that is to encourage uh, young people involved in sport to actually have a voice and to you know make sure that they're being heard and that their opinions count so yeah it was a great day. So Rosie the, uh, the cricket program won an ICC award I believe. Yes, it did. It was uh, really exciting uh, getting that news. And I think with all the different people involved in the programme, um, it wasn't just myself, it was also strength and conditioning coaches at Cricket Scotland, um, putting some of those exercises together and making sure that everything fitted in nicely. And it was all there for a reason. And, you know, with printers and things like that, we had so many people involved at the sides and just even adding in their input and, and their experience and programs and things like that and within all the clubs and the coaches there was a lot of people involved and um, and so to get that recognition um, and especially for us just managing to pull together all the resources that we had um, it meant so much it really did and it was just really exciting for us to show to know as well and get the recognition that we have a program that's really um really sustainable and that can do a lot of good for for other for other places as well like ireland and what, what do you say for the future of cricket in scotland is it expansion to schools further is it helping other countries like ireland is it what is the future yeah, I think um, there's there's obviously a lot a lot going on, and and more and more people are learning about crickets, and so you know the word is getting out about it, and I think the next big thing will be making sure it's accessible for everyone, and um, however we may do that, um, not to be announced yet, but we will we will be making sure that um, this will be a program for for everyone to access um, and that you know people keep the quality of it and and that it's not it doesn't look different somewhere else it looks the same because if we've got kind of something that works then then um, it's really important to keep keep that and show show how cricket scotland have done it in cricket ireland and then and then hopefully we can try and expand that more so there's loads of different options i feel um, and there'll be some some kind of key priorities in the next few months that we'll be focusing on at Cricket Scotland. Um, and it's really exciting times though. I'm really excited. And Ali, now that Cricket Ireland has started its own cricket program here, um, where do you think we could take it and how does it fit in with the direction Cricket Ireland's going for women's cricket? 
uh, to the next country, hopefully we can take it. Um, I think it's really significant in the development of women and girls cricket in Ireland because, you know, as Rosie's alluded to, it's really um, an engaging and empowering environment to be in. Um, loads of the knock-on effects are, you know, significant for the Women in Sport programme as well in terms of uh, getting new coaches and, you know, administrators and people who are champions for the programme and for the sport. Um, and, you know, even though it's a non-traditional engagement tool, essentially there's an opportunity to get into softball cricket, to get into hardball cricket and to, you know, continue your journey in whatever format that happens to be so um, as a gateway into cricket for um, our programs absolutely it's hugely significant and um, once we are in a position to get it out in person we really can't wait to do that and finally Rosie if people want to learn more about Cricket Scotland's cricket program where can we go to find out yeah I think um, on the go to the Cricket Scotland um, website at cricketscotland.com and um, there's a women and girls page within that and it's got myself speaking about cricket and there's a little downloadable that you can get get and it basically shows you kind of the structure of the how the program works and things so go to that if you're in Scotland and have a wee look if you're even if you're outside of Scotland as well but if you're in Ireland then have a chat with Ali and she'll uh, she'll guide you in the right direction. And Ali, we're heading into week two of Cricket Ireland's cricket program rollout online. I mean, how can people get involved and follow it? That's pretty straightforward. Um, so if you want to get involved, have a look at the video and just repeat it, more or less. You've got 30 seconds per exercise, there's six exercises, so you're working really, really hard for three minutes. So um, yeah, watch the video and do it and record it and then post a reply. Phoenix Cricket Club did an awesome one last week where they had their entire um, team do it at a training session, which was really, really cool. And that's proven pretty popular online as well. So it'd be awesome if we could get some more teams to do that as well. Fantastic. We'll go check that out as soon as we're finished here. Okay, <laughs> Carol, that's, um, that's a quick visit to uh, Cricket Land. Uh, thank you for joining us, Rosie Ryan. Thank you. And thank you, Ali Nolan. Thanks for having us, Craig. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Farewell for now. 